I'm here with a new weekly video and this time I want to talk about object direct light source as has been one of the requests we received. I have to say first of all that I'm not expert on that and I don't have airbrush that most of the techniques that, or some of the techniques use it are with airbrush so I try to simulate the same with a standard brush. But the first thing I want to do, and I think it's important, is to do a little bit of theory and look some images on what is a light of source in real life. So first I will go through some slides of pictures where you will see light of source in real life. Things we have to take into account when we do a light of source. First, it's going to be the main light of source on our miniature, or we is just a secondary light of source. For example, it's just a plasma, but the miniature is supposed to be in a day light or there are other lights around on the environment. What is the color of light of source? Of course it's important. Uh, what is the background light that you are trying to simulate as well? And what I mean, this miniature is supposed to be in during the day or it's supposed to be in the night? Because as you will see in the pictures, how it's working the light of uh, the source light is completely different. And also, we have to take into account that not all the materials are reflecting or diffusing the light in the same way. Okay, first of all, so here you see this lamp. This is clearly a light of source in real life. And you see that it's not um, giving color to the, to the support of the lamp. So you only have a big focus light of source that is very clear. We guess that this is going to be an orangey so, um, light. But you see that it's completely white and, and then we always have this type of diffusion or the refraction around the light. So first we are going to see some street lights in day and night and then you will see what it, how it's different between uh, the two situations. So here we see some lights during the day. Okay, as you can see, uh, because these lights that are on the day is a very bright dot that you have in the picture especially you can also see the cars it's a bright lot but it's not mm, giving color to the surrounding surfaces so you just have a very bright right color but this important here is that the source is almost white and then we have an aureola around that is uh, more reddish in that case especially in the cars as well and the light is quite a big block of yellowish bright color. On the other side, if we see that during the night and we are doing a white light of source, so the color of all the objects are the, the normal ones, so are the ones that we expected from these objects. And what we have to play a lot is on the shadings. So we have to start from the light of source this is going to be the brightest parts of the object and then the shading we are going to the color is going to be darker as far we go from the light and at the same time any surface that is opposite to the facing of the light is going to be almost black this is when you try to simulate something that is in night light like this one so you can have here we have also some small secondary lights of source in that picture but what i want to say is so you have to play a lot with the highlights so this is just a game of highlights going from very bright next to the source of light to very dark uh where or to darker color where the light is not impacting that directly also important to see that not because the light of source is at the top we have to think how this light is directed on the object so this light is of course more directed to the bottom of the object than to the top part. So if you see the top part of the house is almost black while the bottom parts are more bright. So this means that although the light is at the, at the top, the, the, the first bright part is going to be more lower because it's how this light is focusing on the object. So what I want to say here, we have to play a lot and we have to plan if we have a light of source, how we are going to highlight the miniature to simulate all the shades and all, all, all the bright or the highlights. Meaning that you have to start from the light of source to the opposite of the light of source. 
and not from more external to more inside of crevices. Can be if a crevice is directly impacted by the light of source, it's going to be bright inside. So it's very important how you plan the highlights when you want to do this type of light of source. Here we see another example of light in the night, and this is a yellowish one. So here you will see that we start from where the light is impacting directly to darker colors as as we're getting farther for that. So if you are doing an object that is impacted by a direct light of uh, light source, then you have to start from very bright where the light is impacting to darker colors uh, as farther you go from the from the light. And here another example with white light. You see that all the objects are keeping the original color, but they are brighter where the light is impacting. Also, we have to see that the, the when we have uh, shapes or we have stain, we have slopes and some irregularities on the ground, they are going to create the shadings, and we have to start the shading from where the light is impacting uh, to to go in further. And here we have another example. So in that case, we see that the tree is also impacted by the light. So the top branches of the tree are very bright, almost white, and then you go to yellowish to the bottom. And then the, the grass, we can see that it's green. So although the light is not com is yellowish, the, the objects are keeping the original color with a yellow filter. And now we are back to our orange light during the daylight. As you see, completely the difference. And here we are focusing the... the the light of source, so we only have orange on the light of source, and this is a very uh, soft light of source because it's complete in daylight. So you can you can see that the the impact or the effect that the light is doing is completely different. If you are planning a miniature that have more light of sources, uh, we suppose that the miniature is fighting during the daylight. So we expect that the the if have a light of source on the miniature. Is not going to be as bright as we expect. So what is important is that we plan within where this miniature environment is, uh, what is the environment of this miniature, or what we think is the environment of this miniature. Here we have another example of light in daylight. So only the real light is bright. So we have the real source very white and then we have a yellowish on the glass but no more. So there is not additional reflections or additional uh, brightness out of the light of source because the daylight is much brighter. And this one for me was interesting because here we have a yellowish light that is um, um, impacting or is illuminating, is lighting a uh, white uh, object. As we see, the white is, is really bright white. Then we have more yellowish on the stone that have darker colors, and the shades are yellowish. The, the shades that were the... So what that means is that the parts that are not impacted by the daylight and should be shade, because you have a light coming from the bottom, are yellowish. As you see, the bottom of the, of the cross is yellowish, the bottom of the clothes of this status are also yellowish. Why the part that is impacted by both lights, the daylight and the light from the bottom, are, is completely bright white. So this is a diff effect that is quite difficult to make. And you have to think how your source of light is going to be. And this is why when you are impacting a very light object with a light of source and you are doing normal shades, this object cannot be darker, so the white cannot become yellowish. The shades of the white can become yellowish because they're not impacted by the other light. But the part that we compose or the objects that are impacted by both lights, the daylight and the yellowish light, are going to be brighter because you are, uh, uh, they cannot go to darker color. And same picture or same statue take the picture when it's darker we see that even the part that is very directly impacted by the light is very white. Then it comes yellowish, so the, the shades are more becoming yellowish, but the core of the light, because the, 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 the statue is very white, is very white as well. So we have to think that object that is very clear is white, which is light yellow, or is 
is not it will not become darker when we do when it's impacted by another light okay I think this is very important for me and we are going to see another example later on on that point of course other things that I were invest I was investigating were um, lights on cars and this one is interesting because here we have that the light is diffracting before arriving to the a, your A, okay, or before the picture. So it's diffracting in the picture. And this way is creating this red aureola around the light. Indeed, this aureola are not on, is not on the car. This aureola of red is on the air, is around the source. And this is why sometimes, if you see especially the, the top light of the braking, the aureola is out of the object, so it's on the air. Okay. And this is why when people is painting plasma or painting lights, it's creating this aureola around that. Okay, and it's working. Because you are not it's not that the object is 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 in is getting reddish because of the light, it's this diffraction the light can cause. On the other side, if you see the other car that is farther, this the light is just very white in the middle. So even we know that this is a reddish light. The actual source is almost white. And here we see another picture of another car with the red lights as well. And, and, and here what I want to explain is when we try to simulate, uh, I know that there is not plasmas in real life or, or it's not common. So if you want to simulate red light, look for objects that have a red light or look for other objects that have blue light. So here we are trying to simulate also, if we try to simulate red light, we see that the core of the light is almost yellow, is yellow and white. Then we have an aureola right around that. This aureola is also caused by the diffraction and it's most captured by the camera. Other thing that we can see is that we see that, we see that in that case we have other lights of source that are reflected on the car. So when we have very polished or bright surface, we are not going to have an aureola, we are going to have more a reflection of this light of source. As we can see here on the middle, we see these two dots that are, is another source of light. So this is why I say at the beginning that it is important to know what type of surface we are reflecting or where, on what type of surface we are impacting with the light. Here again, this is a little bit of aureola run and this is diffraction on the air. It's not really that the object is reddish. Another example of red lights from a car, very orangey, yellowish, um, white at the, at the middle. Uh, we know that it's red, but here uh, we almost cannot see the red lights and there is not any aureola. It's completely in daylight, so only the source is really bright and the rest is not uh, have, it's not having reddish color. Fire is another interesting object when we paint the light of source. And here we see why I think it's a great picture to see why when we paint fire we have to do the opposite of shading. So we start to we have to start from very white yellow at the core to go to orange, reddish, almost browns and blacks at the surface. Especially if you see the core is completely bright, it's almost white, while all the surroundings and when you get farther from the core of the fire, it's becoming darker. So you have to follow the same. So you have to start from very bright at the middle, going darker to the surface. Here we have another fire example. Okay, and then here we see that all this fire around the fire, where we have the 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 source of the fire we have this reddish aureola that is the wood that is at red because it's the, the source of the fire. Here we have another example of fire and we see that the fire is not causing during the daylight is not uh, is not causing reddish uh, aureola run. So the colors because it's in daylight all the, the things around is keeping the original color. Okay we have some flames very bright in the middle and then it's getting darker as we go higher on the fire and also the very bottom is very is, is more reddish okay this picture of this fire is also quite interesting we see that the parts that are a little bit darker than this are brown is getting a little bit of yellowish oranges um, tones very close but the, the fire is almost white 
but there is not big aureola and not all the people is having this orangey shading so very close to the fire only we have a little bit of orangey suppose this picture is taken later in the day not uh, in the middle of the day where the light is much bright and another fire this is another uh, picture of fire this is a small fire you see that we only have this reddish on the stone and here is why when we paint fire you see we start with white from the core very light yellow and then we go to orange and sometimes you can put black but you can finish with orange and red on the top okay i think this is a very nice picture to keep when you want to do fire this is a whole fire is working very well when you try to paint on miniatures and later on i will show some miniatures and i will do an example to complete this video maybe it's going to be a little bit long video but i wanted to dedicate some time to lose some pictures because sometimes we want to jump into painting the miniature and we don't pay attention to the real life or the pictures where we can get inspiration or we can use as a guidance to do a better job on the painting another fire in daylight i will not spend more time you see very limited reddish area all around and this is a, a fire in the night you see very bright almost white the fire because the picture needs time so it's the the picture is overexposed here but you can make uh, more transitions the people is completely reddish okay so and this is why this is working if your miniature is almost black so you cannot have other colors on your miniature if your miniature have white and you paint red you see there's no clear color than red so you go from light red to dark red black but they are not whites, they are not yellows, they are not other colors. They are only reds and, and browns and, and reddish colors. This is because the only light of source is the fire. So you cannot have white even if it's wearing a, t a white t-shirt because there is not white light of source. And this is why sometimes we make a mistake. We paint something that is yellow or is here you cannot have green either. So you cannot paint a green and then make a reddish aureole around the fire. Because this means that this green is because green because you have another source of light so you have to be careful when you compose the colors so this reddish aureole is working very well well on dark colors on browns on darks will not work make this reddish aureola on a yellow or green or white miniature and this is the reason why i explained that you have to plan very well how you want what uh, what is the around environment when you're painting the miniature this was an interesting picture to show uh, melting metal, so it's you can use this as a guidance to simulate a power weapon, for example, that will have a very bright light of source. We will have a small aureola around this. See the white or this dark gray is almost is taking a little bit of yellowish because it's the, that is brighter than the other because the rest of the white is grayish. Is not, there is not a lot of light around, so this is why you can have a bright yellowish color and then the rest is gray. Always take into some the part that is impacted by light has to be lighter than the shades. Will not work if the part that have impact by the light have a darker color. And I also look to some police cars or police lights to see how they reflect on the cars because this can simulate very easily. You can see what will simulate to make a plasma, red plasma. Or blue plasma lights for example or a red power source if you want to make like a light of source so you see that sometimes you have this bluish or reddish area all around there's more diffraction on there and then on the car you will have just the reflection of the light let's do go for another picture picture is better from my point of view you see the car is not getting bluish color it's just a reflection of the light it's mirroring the, the source of light Okay, this is because it's a very polished surface, so it's not diffusing, it's just reflecting. When you have a surface that is reflecting, or it's a metallic, will do this type of brights and will not make a, a blue aureola, as they say. Will create just this um, secondary, so will make a reflection and will create a secondary source of light. So this is another example, you see the top of the car, and here we have another aureole because this is taken at the night. So this is, but you see again in the middle, it's just reflecting the source of light. So 
Normally, polished metals will create like a secondary source of light because it will work as a mirror. And I also look for decoration pictures, rooms where the only source of light are these lights. See that the ground is blue because the white is not getting here. So where the white is not reaching, you will have this bluish shade. But then everything is in bluish tones. The curtains, for example, are very bluish at the bottom because the light from the white light cannot reach this bottom. But where the white light is reaching, you have only white. And then the blue what is creating is a secondary shading at the back. Here we have a room that is only lighted with blue light. Everything is blue. There is not other color. So you have to work from very blue at the close to the source of light to less blue. And this is the only way that the light is working. You cannot have other colors. You cannot have white. You cannot have yellow. So you only can have blue if the only source of light is blue. Same here. You only have red source of light. Everything has to be red. Only we have another color when we have another source of light. That is the, the window or, or this screen here. But if you see the room and you start from almost white, where the source of light it is, to going to yellowish a little bit here, and then uh, everything is shading on red. So what I mean here is, if even if your miniature is supposed to be white, if it's impacting only by red white, because your only light of source is red, all the miniatures have to paint on red um, shades. And this is why from time to time it's not working on me. And I don't do this uh, light of sourcing because I, normally I imagine my miniatures on the daylight. I do all the highlights with daylight, so this means that, the, that I will not have this reddish tone all over the miniature because I have brighter light or have a white light that will give the right color. So make no sense that white is becoming red because it's impacted by red if you also have white light. Is, here is what I want to explain, okay? So you see the bluish is because there is only blue color light. But when we have white light, the white light is, is eating the blue. Okay? And then here that we have greenish light, then everything is on green. So you have to plan it, and here is you have to think really how the, the you want the miniature to look. Here another example where we have multiple source of lights. So we are going to have only red, as you see where the blue and the red and the yellow light are not able to reach. Okay, so only at the bottom of the sofa. We'll not go further because then the, the white or the blue light will compose with the red and will give the original color. Okay, even though this picture overall is quite dark. And this is the last picture I want to show. Well, there are two pictures. This is shared some time ago by in Google Plus, this is explosion of a watermelon. Here we see how explosion works. So here we also have the watermelon that is creating more reddish color than normal. You see that this origin of the explosion is very bright and then you go darker. <clears throat> the next picture for me is more interesting. You see here this is the start of the explosion. So the source of light is very, very, very bright. It's creating this bright on top of the table because the table is a darker color, maybe greenish. And the source of light is very powerful around here. So this we but it's almost white. It's very white bright. If you see the the lab coat is not get, becoming yellowish. The lab coat is wh brighter white. So not because the origin of the explosion is yellowish, the lab coat is becoming is be, is becoming yellowish. The lab coat is as bright as the light. Because have also it's also capturing the light from the sky, so this way you start, and then you have to start doing the shading from the origin to the explosion to the back. On the other side, the face and where the daylight is not impacting, for example, here below the arm, and then you have these yellowish tonalities because here the the daylight is not impacting, and then you have this yellowish, and on the face because the face is 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 not white, it's orangey color or it's, it's a flesh color, then it's capturing and it's reflecting. Indeed, this the face, the our skin is more reflecting the light. So this is why it's more yellowish. So for me, this was a very interesting picture, very inspiring to understand how the colors is composing when we have a light of source. This was the last picture I want to share. 
So what I want to explain is there is when you plan object uh, that is a light of source, you have to plan holistically how all the miniature how the miniature will look like. So you have to think that it's going to be the only light of source, or we are going to have other light of source in the environment. How the light of source will reflect or will diffuse on the different surfaces. If I have a metallic, uh, for example, a sod, I will not create a yellowish aureola around the sod. I will create just a reflection, a secondary reflection of the source of light. So maybe I need, if I have a, a, a torch, I have to simulate the fire on the sod. And we are going to have a very bright part on the sod, and the rest is going to be um, just metallic. If I have all the secondary, uh, I have composed light, uh, we have to think that clear colors will not become darker because are impacted by dark light. They will keep the original color, and only the shades will change because we have a secondary uh, light of source. So I hope this is helping you to understand a little bit. And now I will give you some examples, and I hope I can explain on, on real miniatures how I work it, and this makes sense for you. So now let's pass to some videos of how I do. First I will do a bike, I will paint the light, the front light of a bike, and then I will show you examples that I did on fire and other miniatures. And I hope this is helping you to understand more how to do uh, light of source. And as I explained, I'm not expert, I'm also learning on that. I look these pictures to learn more and more and understand more how these objects, or how the light is working on the miniatures. So uh, maybe in future I will do another one once I have better techniques and I understand better how this works. Now let's go, let's pass to the video. So now after uh, watching the pictures and the talk on, on the theory on the light, I will do light effect on this light here. Okay, I, this is just, I will repaint later on, it's just to show one way to do it. So I will start first applying Dawn Yellow on the source of light. So first I will paint the source of light. Okay, I will try to make white light. And normally when you see if it's dark when the light is reflecting on the black, it's giving a black finishing. A uh, white finishing, sorry. So it's making the the The, the black very very light so I'm trying to keep the a little bit the grid but here to be fair I think it's better first to paint over the grid and and I need to do the, the minimum amount of paint possible okay I do paint here the focus and then I will imagine that we will have some reflection here. So most likely we'll have a, we will have a reflection that it will follow the edge and then we'll have a reflection more or less in that part. Okay. This is why what I will think this light will do. It will paint. First I, I leave it quite solid. Right? More or less and then I will expect this to do a reflection like that. just to know more or less the area that I need to, to work on. So next I will do, uh, first I need to wait a little bit to this drain the, the light before working on the light. I will take, here is it's going to be a little bit tricky. I will take light gray.
I will and I will use the previous color mix with the light gray. So what we want to do is to make some degradation, some some gradient to make this transition softer. So we use the light light gray. It's too much, so now we go to darker gray even, and we will work the mixture to make the transition as soft as possible to black. But I don't know how to explain it exactly. So we need to leave a core that is, you remember the light when it's reflecting, it's leaving a core that is very dark, and then so I a very light and then. It's transition very fast to the to the color to the black in that case. So this is how I'm working. If you want to simulate a reflection of the light, you have to be quite bright at the middle. and go to dark quite fast right so this can be some who can look like right now we have to let it dry and the thing that we need to do now that this is drying, the, the the source of light is completely dry. I will do no, I will use white, and I will use the middle of each is this is square with pure white, because I try to use to do yellowish but white light. And then, just here in the middle, go to the extreme. And this edge has to be completely sharp, because the light is not reflecting on the rest of the bike. So we suppose that the light is not don't, don't have enough angle to touch the front edge. So I'll leave it like that. Okay. Then the only thing that I am doubting if you can do small reflect reflection on the canons, for example, in that case. The red, I think, is too close to the source of light, unless this is having. But here, on the cannons, just on that side, I 
and you can do maybe a small touch here on, on the just on the edge just a, a second reflection so in that way but should not be light at the back okay so this is how the light can look like and then the rest will go to the to the front so this is quite a tricky one now I take the black To thicken some points, so I need to correct. So as you cannot see it in camera, I'm just correcting because the, the, the black lines, the black lines have to be very thin because they will be blind so you you will be blinded and you will almost not see the grid with all the light coming from there so this is more or less I need to, the grid is not perfect the grid in front of the light but this can be one way to do it can happen also that the light is so bright that you are blind and then you don't see the grid anymore so you can paint also the grid and you can avoid to paint the grid in white so this is one way to do it so I also did this on, on fire and other miniatures. So now I'm going to show you another other cases as we do. And you will see that it's working very well. It's working well on dark colors. So that one has just did the reflection here on that side of the head. Okay, and on the cloth, just next to the fire. Okay, and the source of light, uh, also the light, the here's the a uh, the a sorry you you can see also that I painted as fire, and the other thing is that the source of light, I do the um so I did the opposite of highlighting so it's the inverse highlight, and going from very clear at the core to darker at the bottom and this. Mainly the, the the best way to work an uh, object that are light or source, especially like fire. If you have seen the pictures, they are very bright at the core and less bright at the edges. It's difficult to, uh, of course, to give the ethereal effect of the fire with a solid object, but I think this is the best way to do it. We'll see if I have another example to show. This is another one. Also try to keep the source of light lighter than the reflections. Okay. You see here in that one the I did the the eyes and the mouth in very clear color this will make a long effect of light and here on the ground I did the blue because this is representing a little some energy so I did a little bit of shading a blue shading around the the stones the point is what I read uh, and also here at the bottom of the of the clothes. I think the fire is working better. Let me see if I have an one to I show, show is an example. In that case, this is uh, the canon that I painted a while ago. You see the fire was done on the opposite way that I, I 
I, I explained before was from dark at the core to light at the edge. If you compare, for example, to this one that was done in the right way, this fire is looking more and more interesting. It's looking more like fire. And then if you add some highlights on orange and yellows next to the fire, the effect is even much better. Remember that if that the, the if you are doing these highlights on white, you should not do highlight white with yellow because then you are doing the opposite. So the shades are going to be dark, um, lighter than the than the parts that are more exterior. So if you remember the the guy with the um, white lab um, coat, the white becomes brighter with the with the fire, especially if you paint it white, because it represents that it's light also from other parts. So you have to imagine this, if you can see this part, for example, here, it means that there is light that is impacting here. If not, this should be very dark if the only source of light is the fire. Here, for example, if I can see the, very well all the schools on the other parts and all the parts, make no sense that I do all, uh, all this thing yellowish because it represents that there is a lot of light in the environment to pop up all the other objects so the the, the source of light or the fire will not be a, a, a powerful enough to create these shadings as you can see when there is a, a daylight here you only because it's very black you can do the reflection if you're painting the bike white this effect will not work as well so these these effects are working much better on dark colors than on light colors because it represents especially this canon for example imagine that you want to do reflect will not make sense that the white is becoming darker with the light have to become whiter uh, so and and maybe you can have a small orange reflection because it's doing like a mirror because of the shininess of the armor of the fire but the the mainly the the white will become brighter and the shades that the it should have because there is uh, the shades will become yellowish because of the reflection of the light so the, i think these are some examples i hope this has been useful for you so you have to think first um what is going to be the environment you're going uh, it's going to represent that is in a dark environment or is in a clear environment with a lot of environmental light or not um use pictures to guide yourself to understand how the light is working on the, on the different objects to make sure that uh, um, what you are doing is it will represent here uh, can be improved but it's a way if you represent it that is reflecting on a shiny armor plate of the bike so you have to think uh, a little bit on the properties uh, of course the diffraction that the light is causing is quite difficult to catch uh, on a, uh, on an object because normally this diffraction is occurring on the air it's, it's a visual effect when you're looking directly to the light of source the source of light sorry so but I think this is the way I will do it also on the plasmas I see that there's a lot of people um, painting all around the plasma I'm not very fan of doing that especially if you are painting um, light colors because it's going to be weird that everything that and uh, the plasma light is overruling the rest of the light on the oil is more bright than the rest so what I try to do is to make uh, the core um, almost white and then go and um, darker around so but I don't I, I don't like to paint all all with the I don't like to do all the highlights of blue around the, the plasma gun. So this is this is the way I like to do the plasma and I try to focus, so I do try to go from light in the court to um, darker blue on the edges. So this is my way to do it. Maybe there is other people explaining. Remember I only use brush, I don't use airbrush. So here you see again difference between the um, I, I, for me this was a mistake I did in the past versus the new way to do the fire see that this fire is it's more, it's much more lifeful than this one so that's all 
Let me know if you want to know more details or this was interesting for you. Thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!